So <clears throat> today we're going to go from this here to this here. How awesome is that? I've needed to uh, figure this out for years. So you go onto Sketchfab, you download a model, and you know that you're going to have to mess with the textures. But what happens is the texture, sorry, the model has about eight, in this case, eight or nine 8K textures, and it becomes unmanageable. You can't edit it, and also takes up a lot of memory in Blender. So we're going to do that today. It's very, very useful. Uh, and there's been times when I've wanted to download a model and I've realized it's got multiple textures and I think forget it because I know <coughs> that for my scenes needs I will have to uh, edit that texture and it's not possible when there's just messy UVs and everything like that. Okay, so I've just learned this, after, like I say, after years of trying to figure it out and it was so useful that I thought I've got to just throw together a tutorial. It may not be polished, but I have to get it out there all you um, concept artists and similar 3D artists. Uh, okay, so let's start. This is the finished product. Let's go back into the previous product, uh, the unfinished product. Okay, so what we have here is an object that I have sliced out of a la much larger scene. It was like 2 million polys, but I liked the floor because <coughs> uh, it was just nice and photorealistic. Uh, so I just sliced that out and uh, what we have is uh, a whole bunch of you can see here how messy it is uh, it's completely random uh, now what you'll find is that your uh, sketch fab model will be like this and it'll be one you know one whole model so what you will do is first separate it out I mean this is the thing I've only just got into this uh, some of the steps in here may not be accurate, but they'll get you where you need to go. Uh, I found that for mine, because the tutorial that I was following, the guy was using separate models. So I decided to just follow it exactly and separate my models into pieces. Uh, so what, all I did for that was to go into uh, edit mode, click on a polygon and go select uh, similar material. And it would select all that. And then I would just use P, separate selection and then and did that until I had all of these separate models okay so the first thing that we're going to do is to add a uh, a new UV map to each of these uh, and I'm going to just delete that because I don't need it uh, so we'll go to the first one I've already done this uh, and we add uh, just for the sake of showing you how I did this it, it's like this by default uh, in this uh, data tab and I click add and I give it a name like baking and I did that with all of the separate models or pieces so there we have every single one has its own separate UV map called baking I believe uh, you can name it whatever you want but I'm uh, imagining that they all need to have the same name. Uh, either way, just do it like that. So that, uh, and also make sure that when you've done it, that it's selected. So as I go through this now, you'll notice that it's not like that. It is like that. So that's done. That's done. They're all selected on the baking UV map. Okay. And uh, next up, uh, we will select all of the separate objects like so hit tab now uh, before i go further the environment that i'm in now is the uv editing uh, workspace we have the uv editor here viewport and the uh, shader set up here uh, that's just the workflow that we are work working in it's uh, useful to do that so set that up first um okay so we've selected all of our objects, gone into edit mode so that we're in the edit mode of everything. And then we hit A for all, so everything's selected. So we can see all of our polygons here selected, everything's selected here. 
uh, what's next? Uh, so then we use a smart UV project. Did I miss something over here? Not sure. I don't think so. Okay, so uh, then we hit in this window here with everything selected, we hit U and we choose uh, Smart UV Project. Now you're supposed to put a margin in here. Mine says scaled. Um, and in the tutorial that I saw, they just put a figure in here. So instead, I put it in here, 0 0.01. And I think that will make it so that the uh, the UV islands are a little bit more spaced in case you do need to change them later, which I did uh, just to fine tune things. So um, you just basically, other than that, you leave it at default, hit OK. And now you can see everything is neatly organized. Uh, however, obviously, what you're seeing behind that in this texture drop down here is the original one of the islands that the uh, the model came with. So we'll uh, see that that goes away later. Um, so then we need to make a new texture. So in uh, anywhere that you like really, say in here the existing uh, slot, uh, anywhere there, just make a new texture, like search, image texture, and hit new. Make it uh, 4K in this case. Okay, give it a, a title of, let's just call it baked uh, wood, something like that. Uh, everything else by default, hit OK. And now you can see that has translated into there. Now, it may not do that. If it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a big deal, but uh, you can go in the drop down and find it here. So then, what do we do next? Uh, we need to add the blank texture to all of the uh, models. So there are all the pieces. So we can go back into object mode and start selecting our pieces and go to Shift A, uh, search for image texture, choose the baked wood that we just made, like so. Select it, that's important. Now, rather than having to go through the whole process, we can just control C, control V throughout the rest of them. Speed things up a bit. Uh, this one already has it. Uh, put it in there, put it in there. Okay, and that one already has it. I'm not quite sure how that worked, but it somehow added it to certain ones that I don't remember adding it to. Okay, so uh, the next thing to do is make sure that all of those are selected uh, in each of the objects, make sure that is selected as you can see it corresponds I mean uh, uh, blender 3.6 I'm not sure whether it's a recent thing but when you select the texture it shows up directly in the UV editing window but you'll see that it's the blank one that we just made so just make sure in every case it is selected with a white border around it okay so we have all of those selected uh, in the material uh, shader editor. We've got the baking selected in the UV. Okay. Uh, and select all objects. Okay. So yeah, we've got all, everything selected. And now we just need to go into uh, bake. So. And then we go into the render tab and go make sure that uh, cycles is selected and then we'll go into bake and we will choose uh, for this instance I'm only going to be thinking about base color aka albedo or diffuse <coughs> um, 
because that's usually what you get from Sketchfab. Uh, I'm sure the same process applies for normals, but for right now I'm just going to be using the uh, diffuse. So for that one in the bake tab we choose diffuse and then we uncheck direct and indirect because we just want to bake the color, we don't want to bake the lighting. Um, do, do, do. Let me just double check my notes here, make sure that I've got everything. Okay, I'm just trying to think. Okay, big cycle. Okay, uh, sampling is important as well. You know, when you do a normal render and you go into your render settings, and this is way high, um, this is not what you need because you're not rendering a scene with lighting. So, we want this to be as small as possible. So uncheck that, put that down to number 10 rather than 1496 uh, and that should do it. Okay and then I believe that is it. Uh, oh well uh, I was just told if you have any metallic information get rid of it apparently there's an issue there. May not be in evident in 3.6 but uh, there was a, a bit of an issue there. And then we just hit bake. Um, I will not do that because here, here's the deal with mine. I've got uh, seven 4K textures. I've done this before. It took like an hour or so. Um, so we will just go straight to the finished product. Sorry, one quick thing that I forgot to mention, uh, which I'm putting in after the fact. Uh, once you have your uh, image baked from all of those textures, it will look something along these lines. Um, you'll need to save it uh, so when it looks like this and you've uh, finished your baking process uh, you'll just go to image uh, save as and give it a name save it locally here and then uh, you can make sure that when you have your image attached that is actually referring to a JPEG or PNG that you have saved um, I've made. I'm. I'd never used to understand this, and I would, uh, in other situations where I would make a new texture, I wouldn't realize that I had to save it, and it would end up disappearing. So, always make sure to uh, do that, and then get on to the next step. Okay. So once that's all been baked, this uh, this is not the baked version. Uh, this is, but uh, I wanted to illustrate what you have to do for your materials, which I've already done on this one. Uh, so it's helpful if I use this file just to illustrate. So um, so you've baked everything onto your new blank 4K texture. And, uh, but, but what you may notice is uh, when you go to apply it, that it doesn't look right at all. And that's because you're still using your old UV map and you need to delete it. You also need to create a new texture based on the new blank uh, texture that you just made. So create a new texture, give it whatever kind of name you want, uh, add an image texture, choose your baked wood, add it to the base color, and then uh, that, and that's going to be your nice, clean, easy, simple one slot texture. Um, which you will then need to apply to all of these. But first, you'll want to go into your UV map and delete it for each individual one. Then, when you take the, your baked texture and then apply it, uh, you can just make sure that all of the slots are clear as well. So if I take that, for example, and choose baked. Uh, so I didn't give that a, a name, did I? Baked material. Baked material. Right, so it'll be like that. And then you just can go in and de delete all of the slots except for that. And it'll be fine. And then finally, once you're done, you can just select them all, hit Control J and there will be one image with one texture as per this one which I have cleaned up earlier. 
and it looks pretty cool now you may be lucky and it entirely depends on how the scan data was i was kind of hoping it would be a bit do a bit of a better job uh, you may be lucky in that in this situation the scan data did keep um, fairly large chunks of it intact just as per the original uh, 4k scan scanned textures however as you can see there's lots of fragments so you know uh, you can always go in which i had to and go into like these bits here which there's no scan data really for here it's just ugly so i would just take a bunch of these for example and then hit u and wrap find this thing here hit a scale and then just pick something that looks appropriate really so something like that rotate scale again and you can turn this off to get a better look and so at least looks somewhat uh, fitting with the top piece uh, same for these here you can just grab these hit U and wrap a s for scale scale it all the way down r for rotate and at least it will look somewhat passable for my scene i won't really be seeing these edges uh, but you know you could uh, really clean these up better make them more fit the actual uh, value and color more something like that so Yep, I hope that was uh, informative and not too long-winded, but it's very useful to know. <sighs> yeah, so get cracking, get downloading those Sketchfab models and cutting them up and making some good use out of them. Now, if you do have a nice clean texture like this, you could maybe go into Photoshop and actually get some decent um, bump or normal data in there by just using your own uh, maps on top of that. Whereas previously, the, the generally you get from Sketchfab very flat models so I'm going to be trying to uh, see if I can create my own normal maps for these too. Okay, just wanted to share that. I hope you find it useful. Thank you. Bye-bye.